Hi, my name is Aya Besma. Hi, I'm Catherine. And welcome to Sustainable Solutions. This program highlights local opportunities to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Our focus is on the stuff we use, our consumer products, and their life cycle. We will discuss many ways to reduce their impacts. We will feature practices and community programs that improve our health, environment, and quality of life. We will also preview plastic shopping bag and polystyrene foam food container reduction bylaws. These were approved at the 2019 Northborough Town Meeting and go into effect January 1st of 2020. The familiar recycling logo depicts three steps to eliminate resource waste and convert materials into new products. The first step of the closed loop cycle is to reduce. The second priority is to reuse and at the end of usable life to reprocess an item into component materials. Many re-practices can be adopted to extend a product's life and conserve embedded re resources. Re means back to prior state, condition, or place. First step is reduce. By reducing usage, we can refuse the offer of single-use items, such as shopping bags, straws, foodware, shipping, and product packaging. To make items last longer, we can purchase higher quality goods with extended warranties, repair to keep them in use, replace with products that consume less energy. Here are examples of local electronic, appliance, and apparel repair opportunities. My name is Ray Fow, and we are holding a repair cafe here in Bolton today, uh, November 9th. And the way it works is this, we invite people to stop by. We have a whole bunch of volunteers who donate their time and we invite people to bring things they have that are broken and we try to help them fix them for free. So it is a way to allow people to keep using things that they have had for possibly a very long time that they may have some sentimental uh, attachment to. Maybe it came from their parents or their grandparents and it's not working and hopefully we can send them home with it working again and they can keep using it for a long time. So. Traditionally shoe repairing is recycling in its rawest form. Like for thousands of years people have been fixing things and shoe repair happened to be a good way to keep things from going in the dump or the landfill. Recycle. Now people bring in stuff that you would never expect to be repaired. But the shoes that come in now, you know, like boots, people spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them. Well, now with the internet, everybody gets online and says, oh, there's a repair shop around here, I can go to them. Because I'm an authorized Birkenstock repair center, everything I do is recycling. <laughs> the next step in the recycle is to, is to reuse. Remember to bring durable replacements for single-use items. Things such as metal straws, water bottles, coffee cups, produce bags, shopping bags, even utensils and takeout food containers. Look for items packaged in returnable containers. Plastic packaging can be used for pet waste. Food in wax or paper packaging can be composted into organic matter and soil. Many items in good condition retain their value and can be resold. Here are some local reuse opportunities. Hi, I'm Missy Hollenbach and I'm from Shrewsbury and I'm one of the coordinators for the event here. Um, and what we're doing is we're collecting textiles and used clothing. And textiles are one of those terms that people get really confused on. Textiles basically means um, shoes, belts, purses, um, suitcases, kind of that kind of thing. Other soft, squishy stuff. Um, I like to say anything that touches a human body is something that we, we would be collecting. And what happens with textiles, a lot of people don't know is probably about 75% of this stuff will actually be worn and used by a human being again in the state that it's in. Thanks, girl. The other, you know, 15, 20% would actually be um, shredded. And then the remainder again, depending on what the percentage is, is actually something that'd be thrown out that it's just so bad that it can't be used. So one of the most important things with any textiles and used clothing that you donate anywhere even if it's in one of those bins, it must be dry and odor free. No mildew, no smoke smells, no animal, whatever. Because what happens is once it gets into a big load, like this truck here, then it actually contaminates the rest of the stuff and it can ruin it. 
So if you put your clothing in one of those bins outside and it's going to rain, don't even bother. Just throw it away because it, it can't be reused again. I'm Jackie. I'm a volunteer at Fresh Start Furniture Bank in Hudson, Mass. 16 Brent Drive. We collect uh, gently used household items and give them to families in need. Hi, um, my name's Tanya. I'm one of the owners of Recolor Paints. Um, we basically work with towns, businesses and homeowners to collect latex uh, paint, usable latex paint. We have a recycling manufacturing facility in uh, Hanover, Mass. We're a local women-owned business. Um, and we collect paint um, through these programs in the towns um, at the household hazardous waste days or latex only events or permanent sites and then we take it back to our facility and recycle it into uh, recolor brand paint. How much of a difference does it make when we reduce, reuse and recycle? According to the state, 23% of Massachusetts residents greenhouse gas carbon emissions result from our stuff their manufacture, transport, and disposal. At the end of its life, when a product breaks and can't be reused or repurposed, the final step is to reprocess it. This recoups some of the component materials, energy, and resources consumed in the manufacturing process. Let's consider the life cycle of two products, one easier and the other more difficult to reprocess, office paper and electronics. Paper manufacture involves harvesting fiber sources forest road building and hauling of lumber, chemical and mechanical processing, product packaging and transport. We use a sheet of paper once and then trash or recycling it. Recycling paper saves trees. It uses approximately 30% less energy and generates 30% less air and water pollutants compared to making new paper and fiber. Recycled pulp or post-consumer recycled content is made into office paper, newsprint, and multiple fiber and board products. The multiple components that go into electronic products include glass, plastics, and metals. Plastics derive from oil and gas extraction and refining. Metals are processed from ore mining and smelting. Manufacture involves circuitry fabrication, factory production, packaging, and transport. Currently, most electronic waste gets disposed of in the trash. Electronic waste reprocessing is a pressing public health concern. Open burning of circuitry to recover precious metals releases highly hazardous substances to air and water. Electronic waste recycling programs are available at a cost to consumers. Benefits of e-waste recycling include fundraising for community groups, and reducing the amount of hazardous components and batteries entering the trash stream. Here are examples of local collection events. Hello everybody, Matt, on our Gold Circuit Recycling out of Palmer, Mass. Here today at Tufts, doing a uh, site-wide collection event. We're collecting styrofoam, electronics, TVs, computers, printers, on behalf of the college this afternoon. Uh, all this material is gonna get uh, Right back to our facility up in Palmer, where we'll do the necessary breakdown, sort and separation, the various components. Uh, yeah, we pretty much uh, get at the point where it's uh, shippable. It's, it's now a commodity. Uh, it might be uh, copper wire, it might be uh, circuit boards of various grade, uh, plastics where we can bail all together. So we'll, we'll bail the plastics, we'll, we'll uh, accumulate the separate commodities and ship it out to manufacturers that are going to then, then take it to the next step. Uh, re regain the copper out of the wire, that kind of thing. Next up, we explore the question, how can we improve recycling compliance in our town? Our municipal solid waste services provide weekly curbside trash pickup and pay-as-you-throw bags. Curbside single stream recycling is paid for through the trash bag fee. The cost of mun municipal recycling services has increased over the past few years. This is because global markets stopped taking sorted, recyclable materials from the U.S. Contaminants in the single stream are a problem that has made recycling unprofitable. These are materials that jam the recycling machinery, ruin a truckload, or contaminate the sorted batch. Plastic bags and thin film packaging strings, styrofoam, residual food and liquid. Let's talk about what belongs in the recycle bin, which items contaminate the process, and how to know the difference. Here's the curbside recycling guidance that lists the most commonly disposed of household items. Do you think this glass jar is recyclable? I think so. 
Yeah, I think so too. Since it's glass and it's clean and it has no more food in it, I think that can go in the bin. All right. How about this? It looks like bubble wrap. Mm, I think most people probably would, but we can use Recycle Smart to figure out whether or not it is, since this one's kind of confusing. Definitely. So if we go to RecycleSmartMA.org, we can type in bubble wrap. And let's see what it comes up with. This item does not go in the recycling bin, according to this website. So now we know. So, so I guess we'll just place it off to the side so we know not to recycle it anymore. Definitely. Now, how about this egg carton right here? Probably, because it's, it it's clean and it's made of cardboard. Definitely, so that can go in. And how about this box that used to be tea. Is it lined with cardboard? And is, is it lined with wax and is it clean? Looks like it's clean. Yeah, and it it's looks all... plastic free. It, lo it looks good. We can put this in the recycling bin as well. How about this piece of styrofoam? Maybe this is another one we should check with our cycle smart. Definitely. All right, let's see. It looks like styrofoam cannot go into the normal recycling, so we'll put that off to the side as well. All right. All right, let's see about our next item. This plastic bag looks like it came with a newspaper. I don't think it can because this um, bag will probably um, not be recyclable. Definitely. So let's put that over there too. How about this magazine? It looks like it's all made out of paper. Does it contain staples? It does. Oh. Well, I don't know if that would work. Should we look at Recycle Smart? Yeah, we shall. According to Recycle Smart, we can put that in the recycling bin. So even though it has staples, it can still go in. Right. How about these styrofoam cups? Probably not, because this normal styrofoam packaging wasn't able to either. Right, so we'll put that over there. And how about this plastic container that had some food in it before? Is it clean? It is. No more food in it. So this is, can be recycled, I think. Yeah, and you can even see it has the recycling symbol on the bottom, so we definitely can recycle that. How about a cereal box? Do you think we can recycle that? Yeah, a cereal box is made of cardboard, and all cardboard is recyclable. Definitely. This might be an easy one, but how about these sheets of paper? Paper is something you can always recycle. And how about this yogurt container? It looks clean, but do you think it can be recycled? Well, on the bottom it has a recycling symbol, so we definitely can. So, aluminum cans like this will actually be better to take these back to the store or something, because they will actually give you five cents and it will be more likely to be recycled if you give it back to the store, and it will be redeemable. And another interesting one is this glass jar that has a metal lid on it. So we know the glass jar is recyclable, but do you think the lid is as well? I think if you probably get res uh, try and recycle the lid by itself, it won't work, but you should keep, if you keep the lid on top of the jar, it will recycle well. Yeah, so we can't recycle the lid by itself, but as long as they're together? Mm -hmm. Perfect, so you can put that in. And here's an interesting one. This is a flower pot, and it has a recycling symbol, but I think maybe we should look it up on Recycle Smart just to be yeah, sure. It has a number five, so it depends. Let's see if they allow flower pots in the recycling. 
This says it has to go in the trash, so that one we All cannot right. recycle. What item in the single stream has the highest value and environmental benefit? Aluminum has a lot of value, like cans, food, containers, and foil, has about $1,000 per ton, so that, that would probably be best. And what is the least valuable thing to recycle? Uh, probably gl glass. And how can we make single stream recycling profitable again, rather than a cost to the town? Um, we could probably decontaminate our recycling streams and buy recycled content goods. Um, by looking and asking for products that are made from post-consumer recycled contexts, we could also um, help uh, decrease the cost to the town. Good to know. In conclusion, as we learn new ways to practice the three R's, it benefits us in multiple ways. Our pocketbook, our health, and our planet. For more information, please see the sources and resources that are listed at the end of this segment. Thanks for practicing and sharing sustainable solutions.